Okay, my friends, this is Shocker Du Jour of Shocker Du Jours. I wrote a book about Velikovsky because they destroyed him when he put his book out about worlds in collision, where Venus almost hit Earth, caused all kinds of problems, and that created the mud fossils. When I realized, I wrote the book called Mud Fossils and Velikovsky and Mines in Collision, not worlds in collision, mines were in collision with the understanding of what they should have understood and they did not understand. The book is on Amazon. It's 99 cents. You don't get a book. You just get to read it. But it's, um, I didn't want any money. I never made a penny on it. It's just there to be informative. And um, it was published back um, in 2016, February 2016. And I had been doing the research long before that. I had DNA tested, CAT scans, specimens, chemistry, anatomy, and I had all the ancient texts validating virtually everything I said. And most of it was related to Velikovsky's research around the world to every single culture in the world, 100%. Well, I can't say 100%, but he went as far as anybody has ever gone to the cultures that had stories, they had deep roots, and they had deep convictions to these stories. And they said, well, this is what happened. And he said, well, oh, come on. Said, yeah, this is what happened. And everybody said the same thing. And it all happened at a certain point in time, and the world was hit by a fiery comet, which turned out to be Venus, and the story went that it was the fiery comet was born, literally born, from the feared god Jupiter, which is the planet. And there is, it did, it came out of the red spot and it almost hit Earth. It took seven days to almost hit Earth. And when it did, it destroyed the ecosystem, absolutely, literally destroyed it because it burnt everything up. It burnt. Remember that word, burnt everything up from the skies. But then what happened? Hmm, a gigantic flood. Well, why would there be a flood if it burnt everything up? The heat was so intense that it literally boiled the waters in the oceans. That's what they say. And it, it, it appears to be because all the mud fossils are from boiled creatures that were petrified and, and, and um, preserved due to supersaturation of silicon in the water. And there is, it doesn't happen normally. Silicon, very heavy, goes way to the bottom, sinks immediately to the bottom of the ocean. And it's called the ocean sil siliceous ooze which is this it's gooey, oozy stuff, which is silicon. It weighs 2.5 times more than water, it sinks. When the earth got wrenched, it all came up to the surface and mixed up with all the water. And then all the bodies that were boiled out absorbed that silicon. And, uh, and they turned into what's called feldspar. All of the stuff I had done when I pr presented this book. Now, I now realize because of the rest of Velikovsky's statements about the, the aftermath, worlds in chaos, what happened after the impact? Well, I can tell you what happened. I know what happened now. And this now puts everything in a historical perspective because I am right now engaged with a discussion with a guy about when did these events happen? He says, my timeline's all off. I said, well, let's talk about that. I, I go by the Iron Age. And you say, well, why would you go by the Iron Age? Well, I'll tell you why. Let's look into it. My friends, it just gets stunninger and stunninger every day. I was going back to look up the Colburn Bible, and because it claims the seas were boiled. So I'm looking through that, and because I think this has something to do with the different ages, the Iron Age, the, the, the uh, Bronze Age, the Stone Age, and so forth. And, and you say, well, why would the seas boiling have something to do with that? Well, I'll explain it to you. It's not hard to understand. It's not complicated at all. But I put in chat GPT and I said, did the Colburn Bible say the seas were boiled? 
It says, quote my Bible, particularly in the bronze book, which is the one we're going to be looking at now, there are passages that describe catastrophic events, <laughs> including a time when the seas boiled. These descriptions align with the book's general theme of apocalyptic, catastrophic occurrences linked to cosmic events. Things that happen, like Venus almost hitting Earth, and that is what caused the seas to boil. Okay, right to the heart of the matter, the Colburn Bible predicts an end to life as we know it by a celestial event. The return of a massive space object in a long elliptical orbit coming back and forth like this around our sun and it was called back then, the Egyptians and the Hebrews called it the destroyer. The Celts later called it the frightener. Now, if it has a long elliptical orbit and it's going to come back again, that would not be Venus. So this, I got some issues to deal with, but because I think it was Venus that caused this catastrophe. But if it goes out and comes back, that, that would be Nibiru, Planet X, that type of thing. I don't know about that. We'll, we'll find out at some point. Now, these are the actual passages from the Egyptian text. Now, this Bible is, they call it a parallel Bible to the ancient, you know, Hebrew Bible. And here's what it says. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear. Mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Let me open this up here. So when blood drops upon the earth, and I can explain all this stuff, the destroyer will appear, mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes, trees will be destroyed, cellulose just got destroyed, all living things were engulfed, waters will swallow up by the lands and the seas will boil. That's the water, the seas will boil because it was almost impacted. The heavens will burn brightly, everything's burned, the whole heavens are on fire literally on fire and redly on fire there'll be a copper hue over the face of the land followed by a day of darkness a new moon will appear and break up and fall yikes that i don't understand a lot of this i don't understand but i do understand the impact into our atmosphere and all these gigantic fires and boiling seas and how the mud fossils were created and and a lot more to do with that event. It makes a, a huge difference when you understand that the seas boiled, which created the three layers worldwide, and the silicon flowed up from the bo bottom because of a day of darkness means that this earth really stopped spinning basically, and it would. It would be spinning like this, and it, Venus would hit it and go, and it, it stands still, for, but it, it would continue because it's scrubbing around the atmosphere of space and it, it, it's like rolling down a hill and it's going to speed back right up to the same speed it was going before basically and right now they're talking about the change of the earth speed because the earth is expanding so big it's not like a, the same size of a tire rolling around anymore it's a big huge tire and it's uh basically slowing down the speed of the earth i believe i read some articles on that but anyway it, it, everything has to do with our position in space and how we affect our or are affected by other things coming into our space and in this case it destroyed everything destroyed everything the people scatter in madness they hear the trumpets and battle cry of the destroyer i mean i don't know what it would be like but i wouldn't want to be there to witness it but i think we may witness it again i don't know the, and they tried to seek refuge within dens in the earth. Terror will eat away at their hearts and their courage will flow from them like water from a broken pitcher. They will be eaten up in the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. In those days, men will have the great book before them. Already there must have been some book before them that said, hey, here's what you should be doing. Wisdom will be revealed. All right? Wisdom is the whole key. Few will gather for the stand. It is the hour of trial. The dauntless ones will survive. The stout-hearted will not go down to destruction. All right. 
Now, the destroyer, as ancient Egyptians and Hebrews called it, is known by other names such as Wormwood, Nibiru, Planet X, or the Nemesis. There are also troubling prophetic correlations to the future predictions of Mother Shipson's fiery dragon and the red comet, warning of astronomer Carlos Ferrada. Now, it sounds crazy, it sounds absolutely insane, but Velikowski recorded from everywhere on the face of this planet, basically all the cultures had the same story. We were impacted by a fiery comet, and and he, he lays out the timelines in several different big catastrophic events, this is that. That's all sort of up in the air now. And I, like I say, I'm. I know. Maybe I mentioned this. I'm trying to work it out with this other guy. He claims that I'm way off, and and that's possible. I I don't know, but like I said to him, I said I'm basing things on the Iron Age, and the three di different ages. How they had copper and stone, and then they went to bronze, and then they went to iron. Well, what's the big deal there? The big deal there is temperature. And what do you mean about that? Well, temperature is related to oxygen. Let's talk. Okay, as you know, Emanuel Velikowski is my hero. And of course, they're talking about his controversial work, Worlds in Collision, and very little of what he said they say is right. And most of his theories, including those about planetary collisions and their effects, are not supported by current scientific evidence. In other words, he was an idiot. So I said, did Velikovsky claim fires were hard to start after the Venus collision? They say, yes. Emmanuel Velsa did suggest that the close encounter between Venus and Earth, as described in his book, Worlds in Collision, had profound and dis disruptive events on Earth's environment. <laughs> Very disruptive. All right, one of the consequences of this cosmic event was that fires became difficult to ignite. Well, why is that important? Why is that so important? And what, what does that have to do with these Iron Age and so forth, which is what I rely on myself on now. So here we have the worlds in collision. Everything's burning in the skies. There's no oxygen left. They couldn't start fires. There was no oxygen to even start fires. You see it? I asked, did they say it was hard to start fires after the Venus collision? Yes. Everything burnt. Everything burnt. It was just nothing but combustion. So it would have taken time to create more oxygen. Well, what is oxygen? Oxygen creates combustion, basically. You know what a bellows is? You know, blow on a little fire to get it to flame up? You're not just putting wind on there for no reason. Oxygen is being infused into that mix to create heat. Well, heat is what smelts metals. Copper is the easiest to smelt, bronze is next, and iron is next. So they were, they were waiting for the oxygen levels to come up to where they could smelt. Okay, I, I got interrupted a number of times, but I'm sure I mentioned about the Colburn Bible and about saying that the seas would boil. Now, this is right at the very introduction of the Colburn Bible, and it's talking about the open book and the closed book. We're looking at the open book of the Colburn Bible. Now listen to this. This is, this is deep. It says, the salutation or prologue, and this is from the bronze book, the open book. Now I'm pretty sure, I, I got interrupted a ton of times, but I'm pretty sure I talked to you about the Colburn Bible and that discussed the fact that we got hit by something and it burnt all the atmosphere and caused no no um, oxygen basically for a long time and then as, as more and more oxygen came they were able to smelt higher and higher temperatures and I know this stuff very well my father was general manager of Wallingford Steel Co Co Company Allegheny Ludlam and he specialized in stainless Stainless, super metals, strip. How does that say? Oh, strip and tubing. <laughs> anyway, that's um, that's a that's a stainless steel, nineteen thirty six Ford. Henry Ford sat in these when they were being made, it was going to make them stainless, but it was too hard. The dyes couldn't handle it. it very, very t stainless is tough. Anyway, I know what I'm talking about when I talk about smelting. Now, 
when I also talk about the Colburn Bible, I'm starting to learn. There's a lot in there. Listen to this. This is this is right from the beginning of the Colburn Bible. All right, it says greetings, and this is supposedly the words from the Colburn Bible. Greetings, unborn ones, now asleep in the dark womb of the future. All right, so this go, they're talking from long ago. We aren't even born yet. So from long ago, they're talking about what's going to happen. So they're saying, good morning, greetings, unborn ones like us haven't been born yet. We're asleep in the dark womb of the future. Eventually, we're going to be born. Greetings from we who were once as you are now. So, so greetings from, from we who were once as you are now and like whom you will one day be. So we're going to be like these people that are talking down to us to say, don't worry, everything's cool. We too hoped and feared, doubted and believed. Were you choosing a gift from the past to the future? What would it be? The golden treasures hoarded by kings, is that what you want? The bright jewels beloved by queens, is that what you want? Is worldly wealth still so important to you once you go in, in transition? It, the worldly wealth's gone. If that would be your choice, above all else, we are very disappointed, for our labors have been in vain. Trying to get you to understand. And boy, I tell you, I can understand how they feel. <laughs> Would you prefer the secret of life, of eternal youth? Have you altered so little from those who live and laugh today with no thought to turning towards the future? This thing which seems so desirable, were it yours, would you value it? Would it never pale? Would you still be grateful for it after thousands of years have passed? The answer would be yes. If this life were all the beginning and end, complete, it, complete in itself, but might not this life be no more than a prelude? You're, just, you're getting ready to be in the, in the real life. You're learning your lessons in life now. That's my feeling. An introduction to something infinitely greater? Is the riddle still unsolved? The secrets of the ages will still be kept? And they have been kept very well known only by a few, and there, was, there are a few that knew them, I'm sure, um, and I think I've uncovered a lot of them. Even when these words are read, how many generations have passed without progress? Does mankind still lie passive like driftwood upon the sea of spiritual apathy, driven back and forth by changeable winds, conflicting currents, making no headway? That's what I've seen. Now this gets is so deep, this is going to take literally forever to go through. So at this point, I'm going to wrap it up um, shortly. Um, there may be a little more going on here, but this really talks about what you have to expect in the eternity. That's a Colburn Bible. It was written by basically the same time as the, the Hebrew Bible, but it... it, it it talked a lot more about the crazy things. So it was admitted. They took it out. They said, if I get that out of here, nobody's going to read that. They'll think you're all crazy. But it was crazy. That's the crazy thing. Crazy wasn't crazy. <laughs> Crazy's not crazy anymore. <laughs>